Good morning to everyone and a very warm welcome to our Pentecost Sunday celebration. This is always one of my most favorite Sundays in the year, not least because we get to wear red, but also because it's the Sunday that for me has the broadest welcome right from the mouth of the Apostle Peter and his cohorts. It's a welcome to all people to the ends of the earth. So we are glad you're here. And I open us with a call to worship this morning that is written as if it's coming from all the original disciples, minus Judas, replaced by Matthias, and right to your ear. So let us begin with this call to our worship together today. Once we walked the hillsides with the Messiah God had promised us. And then he was crucified. And in fear, we hid in the upper room. But God was not done with his son. News of Jesus' resurrection stunned and awed our souls. We didn't know what to believe. God was not done with us either. God sent the Holy Spirit to inflame our hearts even while we were hiding in fear. We arose, stirred from our complacency, and with enthusiasm went out to serve God in this world. This is our story. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from John 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked in fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. As we continue our celebration of Pentecost, please join Pam and Lucy in the first three verses of Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Colorful Sunday of Pentecost this year, we have invited an equally colorful guest who will come to share with us a brief but spectacular version of Pentecost. Good morning. My name is Peter the Apostle, and I've brought today a brief but spectacular version my version of the story of Pentecost. And actually, I'm going to start us a few weeks before 
the Pentecost event. It's about a day or so after, Pente uh, after Passover. And as you might remember, Christ was crucified during Passover. So these days that I'm speaking of here in the beginning are the days when he began to appear to me and to the other apostles. And I want to tell you that that first appearance of the risen Lord was the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. And you know me, Peter. I mean, I had some amazing adventures in my life, like walking on water. But let me tell you, seeing the risen Lord topped even that. But you know, after we began, myself and the other 10 apostles, to see the risen Lord on the road to Emmaus and by the Sea of Galilee and right here in Jerusalem, we began to grow anxious, all of us. Because you see, we all understood that the Roman leaders and the temple officials thought that this Jesus crucifixion had become a closed case. And as the story got out, that more and more people were actually seeing a Jesus that was not a closed case, our anxiety grew. And we all felt like we began to have big targets on our backs. So we were really glad for the peace that Jesus breathed onto us when he appeared. But that didn't help much in that long waiting period that Jesus told us about, that we were to wait here in the city until the Holy Spirit was sent by the Father. And so during that waiting period, when we were all sheltering in place, fearful of what felt like this growing, huge threat just outside the walls of where we were sheltering, we began to need some distractions. And so one of the things that I took on as a distraction was trying to figure out just what kind of a church Jesus had meant when he called me his rock and told me that he was going to plant a church on me, his rock. And I so wished that Jesus hadn't left me before I got to ask him all these questions because I was wondering, can we sing in this church? I don't know. Can men speak and women speak? And can men and women sit in the same place? And, you know, the all-consuming all big question I had was, if I'm sheltering in place, how am I going to crowdsource to fund this big church that I'm supposed to be founding on me, the rock? Because Jesus never carried around much coin or any bills that I know of in his pocket. And I began to wish that Judas was still here. I mean... His spirit wasn't always in the right place, but he knew his money. And I'm wondering how Judas would have helped finance this. But, you know, thinking about Judas made me realize that there was an administrative step in the process of maybe building this new church, whatever that was going to be that Jesus wanted me to do. And that was that our number had gone from 12 to 11 with Judas's departure. And I got to thinking maybe the spirit is waiting upon me to do this administrative task of putting the 12th person in place. You know, sacred number 12, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. So that's when we cast lots and we decided that Matthias would make a good 12th. And so with everything in place, I was feeling a little bit less anxious. That is until the windows started to rattle and, and the doors were banging in and out. And pretty soon this huge roar, cold blast of wind started to blow through the upper room where all of us were gathered. 
And by then there were a lot of us there. There were the women that had been following us and not just the 12 disciples, but a lot of other followers. And when that wind started, it was so loud that we all just put our hands over our ears and we sort of sank down toward the floor in a crouch and squeezed our eyes shut until the sound of that wind stopped. So wild and so terrible was it. And finally, when, when I took my hands off my ears and I opened my eyes, every single head had a flame above it. And their hair wasn't burning or anything, but that flame was over all 12 of us and the women and everybody that was gathered there, one and another and another, and still no one was harmed. And then I did something most unusual. I mean, I, I just stood up because I felt compelled to start speaking. And the only thing that I had in my brain was, is this one of those moments that Jesus told me about that when you know you have something to say, but you don't know the words, the Holy Spirit will provide them for you? That's how it felt. It felt like all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit moved into me and what she brought out of me were some of the words that went way back to the prophet Joel. And some of those first words were, your sons and your daughters are going to start prophesying and the old men among us will start dreaming dreams and you, you slaves, even you slaves among us are going to start prophesying. And the prophecy will be deep and beautiful and strong and rich. And how do I know that? Because what I said next changed the whole trajectory of Joel. In the Joel prophecy, God came prophesying that all of Israel's enemy nations would be put down by God's power. And that would clear the deck for Israel to thrive because all of her major enemies would be diminished. And you know what came out of my mouth? What I said was, repent and be baptized because God has plans for any who call upon God and seek forgiveness and repentance for all of you to be saved. All of you to be saved. Not just the righteous among us, not the well-to-do among us, not just the bright and faithful among us, but Jews from all over the earth. And when I stopped speaking, I, I kind of started to be pushed against the wall because suddenly scores of people, dozens, hundreds, people down in the street below us started to stand up where they had been sitting while I was speaking. And in all their different languages, they said to me, what is the first step, Peter? And even though I didn't understand Parthian or Cappadocian, I knew they were asking me what the first step was. And I said to them, just turn your heart to God. Just turn your whole being to God. Just be baptized in the fire that's above you all. Let it into your hearts, set your hearts on fire all will be saved today. And they began to do that very thing. And by the end of the day, I was exhausted because 3,000 people had joined. And 3,000 people had been baptized. And they were joyous. 
And I knew that the joy was in their hearts because they started sharing their food with each other because we didn't have enough for 3,000. And they started sharing their shelter with each other and the belongings with each other. And I found this really quiet spot in that upper room. And I turned to God in prayer. And I said, here I was, Jesus, thinking that 12 of us was going to be all that you needed and we would be complete. How silly of me not to remember your abundant love. How amazing to discover that this church was going to have no walls, that it was going to be as wide as the globe, that it was going to start from 3,000 people who came from the ends of the earth who just wanted to know you. And that you came not only bringing that message of love, but also all the wisdom we needed, all the gifts of the Spirit we needed to know about sharing and caring and becoming one, despite all these differences. It superseded even seeing the risen Christ to see this thing take shape called church. And I've got to tell you, that was a brief, shining day. But it's the most spectacular day of my life. Until maybe now, if you will show me what that little beginning church has become. Are there still no borders? Do you still love Jesus with all your hearts and minds and strength? Do you still share what you have? For if you have, it will become a brief and spectacular church for all of us. Thanks be to God for this time together with you this morning. So we come to our time of prayer together. And this morning, because we are expectantly waiting for the Pentecost spirit to enter our hearts, as well as the hearts of those so long ago, I'd invite you to sit quietly and comfortably and keep your eyes open during this prayer time. And you may even want to hold your hands open in your laps so that should the spirit slide under the door into your home this morning, your hands and heart and eyes will be ready to receive it. And we will listen together to the prayers of the people for Pentecost spirit, followed by our Lord's prayer. Let's pray together. Pentecost God, help us learn to speak spirit through our masked lips and let others hear love. Encourage us to hear the spirit in the voices of our neighbors who call out for us to see their gifts and well wishes. Embolden us to be church in all our red joy. Invite us to trust, even without fully knowing why, that we can share all goods and have more than enough. Help us let go of our ballooning gifts that truly want to rise and float out into the world. Zoom us into spaces where we can dance with new partners and envision a dance floor that carpets the whole globe. Pentecost us, God. Patch our torn places so we can rise forgiven so we can sing the next stanza of the first disciple's melody of salvation.
and then be in us and through us as we pray together Christ's prayer, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, even as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are pleased that you have chosen to be part of our worship service here at First Congregational Church of Hampton the church that has been proclaiming Jesus Christ in Hampton since 1638. We are a Christ-centered church with an inviting faith, a growing faith, and a serving faith, and we welcome you to join us in accomplishing this mission. We also encourage you to join in the wonderful worship of giving. You can give securely online or by check using the giving information on your screen. We are a praying church, and we sincerely want to pray with you for any needs you may have. You may send those prayer requests to the church office by email, which is also on your screen. Again, we are happy that you have joined us in this service and hope that you will be part of our worship again soon. It's been so good to be together again this week. And I hope that all of you have a blessed week going forward, a Pentecost-inspired week. And with that hope, I share this benediction meant for all of us. May our tongues tingle with the good news. May our hearts open to all the people we meet in the streets and the byways. And when our hearts are bent over by sorrow, walking masked in lonely or dangerous or over busy days, may we find the Spirit's feather on the ground, waiting there just to give us hope.